We are officially halfway through the regular season in NASCAR, but before that, we got some news. That's right. Uh, first things first, very quick. Um, Chad Knauss will miss the race at Kansas on Thursday because his wife is expected to give birth, I think, any day now, so he will not be at the race. And I think Keith Rodden is filling in for him. Yes, Keith Rodden will be subbing in for Chad Knauss. Also, um, NASCAR will not have practice or qualifying the rest of the 2020 season. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. Yeah, I don't know how that's going to go, but I know that it's not going to go well at the Daytona Road Course. We've been doing this for a while now, but uh, I thought we would get back to it. But because of the coronavirus and stuff, uh, it requires more people to go to the track, more cars to be prepared, more people in the shop. Um, in that case, or for each case when you have to bring multiple cars, and that's what happens when you have practices and qualifying. Because if you wreck in practice or qualifying, you need a backup car and you need more people at the track or working at the cars in the shop. So they're saying no practice and qualifying for the rest of the season. They said in the playoffs they will change the draw system somehow. I don't know how, but uh, yeah. That's how they'll do it. And uh, yeah, that the, uh, that's all I got to say on that. Um, I really don't. Uh, Daytona Road Course is the only one I'm concerned about. Everything else I think should be fine. Everyone's been there before. Hopefully, I don't. I don't know. It'll be weird. Uh, that's all we'll say on that. But yeah, let's get into it. 2020. We're halfway through the season. Yay! 18 races in. Uh, 18 out of 36. We want to include the preseason and the non-points paying all-star duels, clash, whatever. Uh, we won't mention that. Elliot won the All-Star. He got a million bucks. Jones won the Clash with a car that should have finished like 30th in a regular race. But anyways, let's look through our winners first. Our winners this year are Kevin Harvick with four wins, Denny Hamlin with four wins, Brad Keselowski with two wins, Joey Logano with two wins, Ryan Blaney, Chase Elliott, Martin Truex Jr., Alex Bowman, T Austin Dillon, and Cole Custer all have one win apiece. So that makes for 10 winners in the NASCAR Cup Series season with eight races to go in the regular season. Wow. That is right. We have 10 different winners. Uh, the first eight, if you told me they were going to win this year, I would have said, yep, I could see that definitely, no question. You tell me Austin Dillon's going to win, I would have said, all right, fuel mileage or Daytona and Talladega, good for him. But no, 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 no. Austin Dillon got played the right strategy, and he held off Joey Logano, Kyle Busch, and Tyler Reddick late on multiple restarts and won that race on old tires. And you told me Cole Custer, I would have thought he would have been top 15 in points maybe and, you know, doing good week in, week out. No, he hasn't been great this year. And then at Kentucky, he was at the right place, right time, made a great move, uh, four wide pass for the lead, and won Kentucky. 2020's been a weird one, man. And you know who's not on that win list? Kyle Busch. That's right. Kyle Busch, the 2018, or uh, sorry, 2019 series champion, two-time champion. He has not won a cup race this year. Zero cup wins and across the board, zero playoff points. Hasn't even won a stage. That is stunning. You would have expected him to at least win a stage by this point of the year. In 2017, if I remember cor correctly, he didn't win until like August. But he had some stage wins under his belt. He had like five or six stage wins before his first one of the season. This year, he hasn't done anything with those stage wins. He's gotten some top fives. He's got, I think he's got like a lot of top fives, actually. Uh, let me check here. Kyle Busch has eight top fives and ten top tens. So it's not like he's completely sucked this year. He's still 100 points or so over the cut line. But he has not won. He has not won a stage. He, he hasn't won. And uh, the first four races, we had practices and stuff. Ever since then, no practice. He's saying that's what the, what the problem is, but who knows? Maybe that is the main problem. Maybe there's more, but uh, obviously with the news, he's probably not thrilled with that. I'm stunned that he has not won this year, uh, let alone have any playoff points. That's a little surprising. He has one playoff point from being top 10 in points, I think. Um, but yeah, I'm shocked that he hasn't won a stage, hasn't won a race. That's stunning. And if you told me that Austin Dillon and Cole Custer would have won before Kyle Busch in 2020, I would have probably laughed at you and said you're not a NASCAR fan. No offense to Austin Dillon and Cole Custer. I think they're both uh, good drivers, but they're uh, Cole Custer, at least, is a young driver. He's a rookie. 
I mean, he's in a really good car, but, you know, I would have said, I think Kyle Busch is going to win before him in 2020. And Austin Dillon, I would have said, he hasn't been good over the past couple of years. That That's not going to happen, but I'm wrong. Kyle Busch has not won in 2020, and Austin Dillon and Cole Custer had. Uh, nothing against them, but, you know, Kyle Busch is a two-time series champ with over 50 wins in the Cup Series. So I'd expect him to win in a season before Cole, Cole Custer and Austin Dillon. But let's talk about some of the people and how good they've been or how not good we've been. they've been. We've talked about Kyle Busch and how good he has not been, but at the same time how he's still been pretty good. He's still running the top five, top ten, but he just hasn't won. Whereas some other guys like Kevin Harvick and Denny Hamlin, they have been great all year. Four wins for each of those drivers. They are by far the two championship favorites. They are having great years right where they left off in 2019, winning races, running up front, competing every single week. Uh, yeah, those are the guys that are definitely the championship favorites. They did not win the championship last year. Obviously, Kyle Busch did that. I think they're a little hungry this year, uh, and obviously they want that championship, and they're trying to rack up as many playoff points as they can. Very impressive years from them thus far. Team Penske. All three drivers have a win. They've had actually a very impressive win, and they could have more wins. That's right. Joey Logano's got a couple of wins. Keselowski's got a couple of wins. Blaney has a win at Talladega by that much. But Blaney very well could have five win, five or six wins right now. Uh, he's had really good cars at Texas. Uh, if I remember correctly, he was up front late at Las Vegas. Um, where are some other tracks he's had some really good speed at? Uh, Martinsville, Bristol, he's had a lot of speed at. So he's had speed all season. They just haven't been able to take advantage of these good cars and finish the race. Uh, they've been getting top fives, top tens, but they haven't been able to finish the race with a win. Add on those playoff points. And I think that's going to hurt them in, in the long run if they can't add up those playoff points because they're so important uh, to the system. And then uh, Joey Logano and Brad Keselowski, as I said, we expect them to win every year. Joey Logano and Brad Keselowski are past champions. Uh, we expect them to compete week in, week out. Uh, two of the best cars in the garage, two of the best drivers. They have really good crew chiefs. Uh, yeah, so the crew chief swap is obviously working for Penske. All three guys have wins before the halfway season. Uh, yeah. Next team we're going to talk about is Hendrick Motorsports. Really hot start to the year. Uh, Daytona 500, they didn't do that good, but that's the Daytona 500. That's a, that's a plate race. We All hell breaks loose in those races. But Las Vegas, they showed up, and they kicked some butt. Chase Elliott swept the stages, um, led over 80 laps or something. Uh, Bowman was up there late. Jimmy ended up with a top five. I think Byron with the top ten. Everyone's like, oh, good running for Hendrick. Then we go to Auto Club, and what happens? Bowman kicks everyone's butt. Leads like 100 and something laps. Wins the race. Um, Jimmy, I think, got a top 10. Elliott with a top 5. Everyone's like, is Hendrick good again? Like, what, what, what's going on here? Then we go on. They keep on going. Then the Rona hits. All right? And we're like, oh, man, can they keep that up? And they did for a bit. Darlington, we saw them uh, two cars in the top 5, I think, at the beginning of Darlington. Then Jimmy wrecked himself. Uh, Byron got the stage win there. They did great at both Darlington races. Elliott was competing for the win before getting wrecked in Darlington 2. Uh, Bowman with a runner-up finish at Darlington 1. Then we go to Charlotte, the Coke 600. Bowman leads a ton of laps at Charlotte. Uh, Elliott ended up with a top five in that race. Jimmy got DQ'd, but he was in the top five, but he got DQ'd. And then we go to the second Charlotte race. Elliott wins the thing, and Hendrick's looking good, man. They're looking great. Elliot runs up front at Bristol. He sweeps the stages, then he crashes himself. And and they've been downhill ever since. Elliot's got a runner-up at Homestead, I think. But outside of that, they haven't been putting the results through, to be honest. Uh, I can't remember the last time Alex Bowman has got a top five, been running up front most of the race. Uh, William Byron has just fallen off a cliff, kind of. Uh, he was running. He was consistently running top 10, it felt like, at the beginning of the year, and now he's outside of the playoffs. Jimmy Johnson was looking great at the beginning of the season. He's still looking good, but he just can't have any luck. Running third at Kentucky and spins out late in the race. Has a great run at Texas, goes from 20th to 8th in the first 20 laps, and spins out and hits the wall in stage 2. He is having. He's had great cars, but he can't put it together. I don't know what's wrong with him. He, he's had great cars this year, and he just 
Something happens. He spins himself out at Darlington and wrecks. He wrecks himself at Texas. He gets wrecked at Kentucky. I don't know how he's going to get good luck this year, but it just feels like it's not going to happen. I want it to happen. I picked him to win a race at the beginning of the season, but it just doesn't feel like it's going to happen. He's just the, His luck over the past couple of years has been so bad. It's, it's sad to watch, honestly. But Hendrick, they had such a hot start, and they've kind of been trending downwards recently. Um, so, yeah, they got to start picking it back up. I think Kansas is a good place for him, though, coming up. Uh, we saw Bowman and Elliott run really good there last year, so watch out for them. Next up, Joe Gibbs. Joe Gibbs, they've been all over the map. Uh, they got one car outside of the top 16, Eric Jones. Kyle Busch is yet to win. Truex has a win, and Hamlin has four wins. They're seriously all over the map. You see Hamlin is a championship favorite. Truex is a little inconsistent. He's He's got race win and speed one week, then the next week he'll run 15th to 20th. Same thing for Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch will be top five, top ten. Next week he'll be a lap down, finishing 21st. And then Eric Jones. Eric Jones said some crappy luck. So, yeah. Next up on the team list is going to be RCR. Now, RCR, I tell you what. I've given them a lot of crap recently. They've impressed me this year. I did not expect them to be good this year. I expected them to be poo-poo. I was like, maybe Reddick. Maybe Reddick can do something there, but... Reddick and Dylan have both been very good this year. Uh, compared to last year, where I think both drivers, Hemrick and Dylan, finished outside the top 20, RCR's been good, consistently good. Reddick's got a couple top fives. He's won a stage. He's been up front multiple times, contending for the rookie of the year. Uh, he's just outside the playoffs by 14 points. And then Austin Dillon, our most recent winner in the Cup Series, Showed up and won at Texas, and it's not like Cole Custer. It's not like that situation. It's not like he's 20th to 25th in points, and he needed that win to get into the playoffs. He's in the playoffs on points right now, guys. You take that win away from him, he's 14th in points, so he would be in the playoffs. He is, him and Reddick have been on that border for making the playoffs and not over the past couple weeks. They've been in, they've been out. They've been in, they've been out. They've been flip-flopping with Jimmy Johnson uh, William Byron, Eric Jones, they've been in that mix for who's in, who's out. Right now, one of them's locked a spot in. I wouldn't be surprised if Tyler Reddick showed up and won a race, but yeah. Uh, SHR, SHR's been, they've been inconsistent a little bit with Boyer. Uh, Al Marola's starting to pick up the pace. He's starting to get some top fives, top tens, leading laps, showing the results. Custer's been really inconsistent, but he's got that win. And then Harvick's a championship favorite. Pretty self-explanatory, but yeah. Austin Dillon, Man, what a guy. Uh, yeah, I, I give him a lot of crap. I gave him a lot of crap last year for sure. But uh, he's been doing really well this year. He's got some top tens, five top tens, a couple top fives, and now a win. That was not a fuel mileage race or a plate race, so shout out to him. He's in the playoffs. Um, but, yeah, looking at this playoff bubble, this little, this little thing, I tell you what, I don't care if you're Eric Almirola, who's 109 points above the cutoff line, or if you're Jimmy Johnson, who's two points above the cutoff line. You're not safe. I'm telling you that right now. I think we have, what, what did I say earlier? Like eight more races before the playoffs? Well, the way this year's played out, we might see a few more new winners. All right. Um, the way this year's gone, I'm telling you, it's been a weird, weird year. Look at some of these guys that are outside of the playoffs. All right. William Byron's in a Hendrick car. They've been they've had their moments while well, they've been really good this year. He could very well win a race. Tyler Reddick, he's had a couple of great runs at uh, Homestead in Texas. What if they do what Austin Dillon did or Cole Custer did? They show up late and they win. They're in. Eric Jones is in a Gibbs car. Gibbs cars are always good. Gibbs cars win races. He could very well win. Looking at that 19th place car of Bubba Wallace. Bubba Wallace has had top 10 speeds at times. I'm not going to say he's had winning speed. But he, he's a sentimental favorite, and you just feel like Daytona, that last race before the cutoff, he could he could show up. He could say, hmm, I'm going to show up and win a race there. He could show up and win a race like that. Um, Christopher Bell is in a Joe Gibbs affiliate car. He had a very rough start to the year, but he's been climbing up in the points. He's been getting more results. He's been getting more top tens. He's got a top five now. He could show up and win that 95 car. If you remember, it competed for a win at Bristol last year. That car can compete for a win. Who knows? And then we still have that Daytona. Uh, as I said, Bubba could win that thing. 
Ricky Stenhouse could win that thing. You don't know. And look, if you go a little bit further deep in the points, you still have Ryan Newman back there. Matt Kenseth. Remember, Newman missed three or four races. Uh, Matt Kenseth. Uh, that, oh, oh, okay, let's go to this real quick. Another big surprise of 2020. Matt Kenseth in the 42 car. Who saw that coming? Anyone? Anyone? Did you see it? Oh, you didn't see you didn't see that coming either? Oh, neither did I, man. <laughs> oh, we won't get into that. I've been in that before. But Kyle Larson bit it, did a uh, big dum dum. Uh, said a said a word he shouldn't have said. Got fired. Matt Kenseth's in the forty two car now. He showed up at Indy. He finished second. What if he wins a race? He's in the playoffs. He's in the top thirty in points. I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm just saying we could have some different winners. So I'm saying you need a win to get in. But uh, yeah, looking back at the rest of this playoff grid, in on points, Eric Almarola, Kurt Busch by a lot, Kyle Busch by a lot, Boyer by 36, DeBenedetto by 51. That's another guy we need to talk about. Matt DeBenedetto. He's having a good year. He's gotten a couple top fives this year. Uh, had a couple of mile and a halfs, Kentucky and Las Vegas. He's got some top tens. He's gotten a lot of stage points this year. That 21 car's won in the past. He could very well win. He's having a good year. I'm impressed with him this year. I'm very happy. I love Matty D. You guys know that. But, uh, yeah, I'm really happy for him. And then Jimmy Johnson is two points above the cutoff line. I said Boyer's over 36 over, right? But, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, Jimmy, the fact that he's in right now is a little surprising, I'll be honest. Uh, based on his results, he has missed a race due to the Rona, the big Rona. Um, and he got DQ'd from Charlotte. And he's had a few wrecks. You look at Texas and Darlington, and he's still in the playoffs. I got to admit, that's pretty impressive. He's got a couple of DNFs. Um, he's got a few lackluster results. He's missed. He's basically missed two races, and he's still in by two points. That's pretty good if you ask me. But, uh, yeah, uh, other big headlines this year have been Larson, obviously, the weather. We've had like 12 rain delays this year. Um, the Rona obviously putting a dent in the season. I really don't know what else to talk about. I thought I was just going to talk about the drivers and points. So, uh, yeah, that's that's your 2020 so far. I can't wait for the second half of the year. We've had some surprises like Kyle Busch losing or not winning a race and Austin Dillon and Cole Custer winning a race before Kyle Busch did. We got Matt Kenseth in the 42 car. We have Jimmy two points above the cutoff line. And he's missed a couple races, basically. He actually missed one race, and then he got DQ'd from another. 2020's been really weird. In the world, in NASCAR, I don't know what to expect from the second half of the season, but if it's anything like the first half of the season, woo! It's going to be chaotic. But, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, you guys have been great recently. Uh, we're having another great month with uh, views, subscribers gained, likes, all that stuff. Uh, it's looking like May. May was a really good month. I think we almost got 50 subscribers that month. Uh, we're about that number, and it's only 20 days, 21 days into this month. Uh, so, yeah, we still got 9 or 10 days to improve those numbers. So keep on liking, subscribing. The Austin Dillon win at Texas from the stands video is doing great. So thank you guys for watching and liking that. But uh, like and watch, like and subscribe and share that this video too. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching.